time, Tom Hartman, will you support Hillary Clinton should she get the Democratic nomination? In a heartbeat. Of course. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. No. Yes. And you'll tell your listeners. I, I tell my listeners that right. every day. I, keep, I, I said it, it too. It, I said it. it you eat the yeah. chicken. Yeah. You know, it, well, the fish it, may be your first choice, but yeah, eat she, the chicken. It's not even that she's not terrible. I mean, she's really good in a lot of yeah. ways. She's just not, in my opinion, she's not as really good as Bernie. I is. think we're on the same page on that. And, and But, she, you know, Let's also remember, a lot of the reason is, is that she has been demonized mm -hmm. for 30 years. Nobody gets beat on like Hillary Clinton. She really does have a kick me sign on her back. So. Well, the Republicans taped it there. Yeah. <laughs> Democrats aren't too nice to her either. No. I mean, there's just something about her that people want to just take a shot. All right, Kristen, did, did Donald Trump make a mistake by skipping last night's debate? We'll find out in three days. Uh, I think the problem is that, you know, so first of all, the ratings for his rally were only a quarter of what the debate got. Yeah, but it wasn't. So, a, yeah. but, but Apple's really, if, if you, in the debate, there was this moment when Megyn Kelly did the old, like, Tim Russert move from Meet the Press, where you pull the old clips and quotes from people and say, hey, you said all these things. What's going on? By not being there, Donald Trump avoided having what would have Absolutely. inevitably been like a ridiculous montage. And also, can I, t can I tell you, I think what he also knew instinctively, because he's a media person, a television person, is that this show has gotten boring. I mean, when I started to watch the part about the immigration debate between Cruz and Rubio, I was like, wow, I've seen this five or six times, this exact debate, and I know what comes next. It's Chris Christie coming in. I know his line. <laughs> hey, this is what's wrong with Washington. Elect me, a fat governor. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting your debate on the Senate floor. Right. Like... I mean, <laughs> yeah. when, when that, that's what they call well, jumping the shark. And if, if, you look <laughs> at, if you look at Donald Trump's poll numbers, they've gone pretty consistently up. There's only twice that they've dipped, and it's after debates where Donald Trump wasn't the big headline, where he was just one guy on a right. stage. So he knows that by being just one guy on a stage, that's be bored people is the, the biggest enemy of right. him. Right. He, he's, I keep calling him the natural. He's a natural politician. Yeah. He's way, right not to well, have Well, he gets advisors. entertainment in a way that politicians just don't. You know, back in the 20s, Oswald Spengler said that you know when a civilization is in decline, when, it, when its leadership and its structure becomes a caricature of itself. Here we right. are. Okay. Um, Trey, what kind of revelations will you disclose in your forthcoming book about your time in Congress? Ooh, good question. What are we going to be in store for? Paul, Paul Ryan is a secret Muslim, number one. No, no. Uh, uh, I, uh, the beard. Uh, the beard. The be Wait. No. Um, uh, I, I will show actually how things can get done uh, in Congress and how some Republicans and Democrats are working together, but I also want to show one example would be the influence of money or lack thereof. So, for example, with the gun control debate, people are like, oh, my gosh, the NRA, they own Congress. The reality is this. A $5,000 check to your campaign from the NRA means nothing. It means nothing. Five grand is what somebody wipes their butt with in a morning of fundraising in Washington, D.C. The reality is, is that the NRA has a large membership, and those members are people who vote, et cetera. But these are some of the subjects that I'll get into, how legislation has become like a big turd sandwich, the omnibus bill, which is 3,000 It's a very pages. scatological book you have. And, <laughs> and uh, there you go. Very, very uh, and how money may or may not book. Okay. See, I'm still writing it. I All need right. to pull it together. Uh, yes, I would cut, take that out. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. How worried should we be about the spread of the Zika virus? Well, uh, here in, I mean, it's a mosquito-borne virus. Uh, one thing I've always loved about Southern California, no mosquitoes. Yeah. I'm, I've never been bit by a Florida. Mosquito. Yeah. Where well, we're from. <laughs> uh oh. Has lots of mosquitoes. Yes. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a particular cool. irony. The big problem with this virus is it causes horrible birth defects. Horrible. The state and, and, and the state that has the highest population of the uh, Asades aegypti mosquito that carries it is Louisiana, where they're aggressively trying to stop Planned Parenthood from passing out birth control. <laughs> I mean, it's wow. almost like, you know, right. karma or, you know, God talking to us or something. <laughs> well, you know, our imaginary <laughs> friend in the sky, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those are both bullshit. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, you're right. I take your point. Uh, yeah. What are the chances that a third-party candidate like Michael Bloomberg, who was talking this week about maybe entering the race, will enter? Bloomberg will destroy Democrats. I mean, this becomes... Right. 
he will destroy. I again. He'll split the, the, the same vote. Right? Yes, the area that I live in tends to have sort of moderate, very fiscal conservative Republicans who might be considered someone who would mm -hmm. support Bloomberg. Bloomberg has now just been sort of relegated to this nanny state liberal hide your big gulp sodas hide your guns and hide your cigarettes because he's going to come and take care of everything okay well i mean that's a little of his resume <laughs> but other than that well, like, 25 years ago he would be a down the line republican who could be the nominee i mean he's fiscally conservative law and order guy uh, a bit of know, a neocon is a that bit of a neocon yep. strong on israel i mean there's a lot of him that's old school imagine republican. an election though where you have either Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, you have somebody on the Republican side who's not Donald Trump, and then you have both a Donald Trump and a Bloomberg independent run. Then you start having an election that looks more like those European countries, where instead of trying to keep everybody into these two very overly large buckets, in a way, you have four different choices that represent very different things uh, that, that different Let, voter blocks Let's, let's have Trump in. and Bernie. Wall Street and Denmark. Let's see who wins. <laughs> Let's have it out. Um, Thank you, panel. You were great. You were a great audience. I appreciate you coming here. See you next week.